The Power of Awareness. Okay. Chapter 2. Consciousness. It is only by a change of consciousness, by actually changing your concept of yourself, that you can build more stately mansions, the manifestations of higher and higher concepts. By manifesting is meant experiencing the results of those concepts in your world. It is of vital importance to understand clearly just what consciousness is. The reason lies in the fact that consciousness is the one and only reality. It is the first and only cause substance of the phenomena of life. Nothing has existence for man save through the consciousness he has of it. Let me repeat that. Nothing has existence for man except, you know, save through the consciousness he has of it. There's only consciousness. Without consciousness, it doesn't exist. Therefore, it is to consciousness you must turn, for it is the only foundation on which the phenomena of life can be explained. He says in the previous chapter, chapter one, I am, he says, I am is the reality to which whatever happens, we must turn for an explanation of the phenomena of life. Therefore, it is to consciousness you must turn, for it is the only foundation on which the phenomena of life can be explained. If we accept the idea of a first cause, it would follow that the evolution of that cause could never result in anything foreign to itself. That is, if the first cause substance is light, all of its evolutions, fruits, and manifestations would remain light. The first cause substance being consciousness, all its evolutions, fruits, and phenomena must remain consciousness. All that could be observed would be a higher or lower form or variation of the same thing. Again, all that could be observed would be a higher or lower form or a variation, a nuance of the same thing. It's almost like he mentioned in chapter one, you know, making reference to the different, you know, feathers in your hat, you know, the different, um, I am strong, I am secure, I am loved, I am man, I am father, I am an American. You're not defining different I am's, you are defining different concepts or arrangements of the one cause substance, as he says in chapter one, right? So here we have it again. All that could be observed would be a higher or lower form or variation of the same thing. In other words, if your consciousness is the only reality, the only reality is your consciousness, right? So if this is true, then it must also be the only substance. <laughs> right? Consequently, what appears to you as circumstances conditions, and even material objects are really only products of your own consciousness. Nature, then, as a thing or a complex of things external to your mind, must be rejected. Right? You and your environment cannot be regarded as existing separately. You and your world are one, right? Therefore, you must turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective center of things. In other words, adopt, believe, believe, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe, no, subscribe, 
buy into it, right? If you do, what it's saying is turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective center of things. It's like as things happen in your daily life, as the asshole cuts you off in traffic as your psychopathic family member you know starts acting crazy again whatever it is it's literally remembering like even my language was incorrect right there you know what i mean because it's not your psychopathic relative it's not the asshole in traffic trying to use the in-between language here as the hook, but even even they're not f***ing real like is the idea, right? Subscribe to it. If you do, like, the rest of this shit just makes sense. So therefore, you must turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective center of things your consciousness, if you truly desire to know the cause of the phenomena of life and how to use this knowledge to realize your fondest dreams. In the midst of the apparent contradictions, antagonisms, and contrasts of your life, right? I guess obstacles, pitfalls, speed bumps, all those... <clears throat> antagonisms all those little antagonisms right contradictions the contrasts of your life there's only one principle at work only your consciousness operating it's not the dickhead who cut you off in traffic right it's not your wackaloon mr magoo dad right it's only your consciousness operating. Difference does not consist in a variety of substance. Difference, the contrast, the antagonisms, the speed bumps, or the potholes that interrupt flow, right? <laughs> Everything, or actual flow. Actual, the things you desire. Whatever it is, like, they are a product of... <laughs> that which we're imagining with feeling. <laughs> even people that I've characterized, even people in my life that I've caricaturized, that I have little phrases for, you know, whatever, and, and I'm accurate. <laughs> I'm absolutely accurate at uh, my caricature. But caricatures are not all of the reality, are they? They are caricatures as seen through the eyes of the caricature artist, right? So, you know, but nonetheless, they are of my own doing, right? And so, in the midst of apparent contradictions, antagonisms, and contrasts of our lives, there is only one principle at work, our consciousness operating. Difference does not consist in a variety of substance, but in a variety of arrangement of the one cause substance, your consciousness. The world moves with motiveless necessity. The world's got to move. It is the nature of the world. It is the nature of life, right? But it's got no agenda. It's got no motive. It's literally your own thought in outpouring of your imagination. It is the byproduct of what you believe with feeling, what you inherently have set yourself up to be living in, right? The world moves with motiveless. It's not out to get you, you know, by its own inherent nature. You know, the world itself moves with motiveless necessity, but it's got to move. Right. By this is meant that it has no motive of its own, but under the necessity of manifesting your concept, right? The arrangements of your mind. And your mind is always arranged in the image of all you believe and consent to as true. 
The rich man, the poor man, the beggar man or thief are not different minds, but different arrangements of the same mind in the same sense that a piece of steel, when magnetized, differs not in substance from its demagnetized state, but in the arrangement and order of its molecules. A single electron revolving in a specified orbit constitutes the unit of magnetism. When a piece of steel or anything else is demagnetized, the revolving electrons have not stopped. Therefore, the magnetism has not gone out of existence. There is only a rearrangement of the particles so that they produce no outside or perceptible effect. When particles are arranged at random, mixed up in all directions, the substance is said to be demagnetized. But when particles are marshaled in ranks so the number of them face in one direction, the substance is a magnet. Magnetism is not generated, it is displayed. I love that. I and boom, that hit me and I just had to sit with that and chew that. Magnetism is not generated. It is displayed. Magnetism is not generated. You don't do this to generate that. It's not cause or effect. It's not in a linear causality. You don't erase the clouds so that the sun will shine forth, right? Magnetism simply is, right? It is, it is displayed on account of that ordered, specified arrangement there. You know, when particles are marshaled in ranks so that a number of them face in one direction, the substance is a magnet. Magnetism is not generated. It is displayed. Health, wealth, beauty, and genius are not created. They are only manifested by the arrangement of your mind. That is by your concept of yourself. It's an attractor field, right? An attractor field, like the, Dr. David Hawkins says. You can plug in. You think that thought's yours, right? No, that... It's been here, man. Fantastical displays of wealth, of genius, of inspiration, of influence, of evolution, of connection, of understanding, of witnessing ourselves in each other. Magnetism is not generated, it is displayed. Health, wealth, beauty, and genius are not created. They are only manifested by the arrangement of your mind. That is, by your concept of yourself. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, if you don't really believe that level of you being God, because it's crazy. Let's fucking face it. It's crazy, right? Do you hear what this shit you're subscribing to? You listening to me, right? If you buy into this shit, tell me it's not crazy, right? I'm God. I can create everything. Everything and everyone in it came from my imagination, right? I mean, think, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, right? You're still here, though, because you know what I'm saying makes fucking sense. I didn't write this shit. It was written here already. The world moves with motiveless necessity. Magnetism is not generated, it is displayed. Health, wealth, beauty, and genius are not created. They are only manifested by the arrangement of your mind. If you don't believe that you are God, then that's the world you live in. <laughs> Listen. Health, wealth, beauty, and genius are not created. They are only manifested by the arrangement of your mind. That is, by the concept of yourself. The importance of this in your daily life should be immediately apparent. The basic nature of the primal cause is consciousness. Therefore, the ultimate substance of all things is consciousness.